The manipulative study has been used to look whether there is an effect of structure and mouse species on tick movement. This study design contains three factors. Treatment, experimental blocks and experimental rounds. The first factor, treatment, consists of four levels known as the compartments within the boxes. These compartments are no structure with mouse species, structure with mouse species, structure without mouse species and no structure and no mouse species or the control experiment. Per experimental round, the four boxes were used as a blocking factor in the analysis, as the boxes might slightly differ from each other. In total, there were four experimental rounds. This resulted in 16 replicates, that is, four blocks times four experimental rounds. The PVC tube connects the four compartments, each containing one of the four levels. Ticks were released in the center of the PVC tube. In order to simulate a natural litter layer, 3 grams of shredded broad buckler fern were added to each compartment. In the compartments with feces, 0.15 grams of fresh weight mouse feces were added. For vertical structure, 4 equal sized twigs of broad buckler ferns were added. The compartments were randomly assigned to the structure treatment. However, compartments which contain feces should always be on the same side, as feces odor from previous experiments might contaminate the boxes. The air humidity was regulated by putting equal sized wet cotton wool inside each compartment. Before we started each experiment, the collected ticks from the correlated field study were able to acclimate to the lab conditions from 3 to 5 pm. For each experiment, 20 ticks were taken randomly and released into the box at 5 pm. This means that in total 80 ticks were used per experimental round. Each experimental round lasted till 9 am the day after the release so the ticks were staying in the experimental setup overnight, which is the period in which they are most active. For each experimental round, new collected ticks were being used. Based on our theoretical framework, we assume a positive relation between the number of nymphs and feces, as well as a positive relation between the number of nymphs and vertical structure. This implies that we expect more nymphs in the feces and vertically structured compartments compared to the control compartment. On top of this expectation, we expect an interaction effect between the presence of feces and the presence of vertical structure. This compartment implies the presence of a host and the presence of cover for hosts, which were two essential features of our conceptual framework. Consequently, we expect the highest number of nymphs in the structure plus feces compartment. The counted number of ticks will be introduced in the model as the dependent factor. The fixed factor consists of the different treatments, which contain four levels that refer to the different compartments. Control, only structure, only feces and feces plus structure. As mentioned before, the experiment contains four experimental setups, which are used as a blocking factor in the analysis. The four different experimental rounds are also included as a blocking factor. By including this blocking factor, Variation due to the different experimental setups and rounds can be accounted for. The fixed factor and the blocking factors are all nominal data. The number of ticks, however, contains count data. This implies a Poisson distribution, so the analysis will be carried out under a Poisson distribution. The results show that no significant differences between the experimental rounds and blocks were found. There is no evidence that the number of nymphs was significantly higher in the host species compartments which implies that our prediction regarding this compartment needs to be rejected. The second prediction, focusing on the relation between nymphs and structure, is partly right. For the compartments with feces, the compartment with structure contained a significantly higher mean number of nymphs when compared to the compartment with only feces. For the compartments without feces, this was not found. There is no significant difference between the control and the compartment with structure. The third prediction regarding the interaction effect cannot be confirmed. The results do not show a significant interaction between the presence of host via mouse feces and the presence of vertical structure. In order to analyze the power of our analysis, we had to come up with an alternative method, since we were working with a Poisson distribution. The approach we used was plotting the different sample sizes against the possible p-values. The graph shows that for a sample size of 16, the p-value is lower than 0.05, and thus this is the smallest sample size at which a significant effect might still be measured. 